If the announcement for Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 has made you want to play the first game but you are unsure about it, I will provide you a brief overview of what you can expect from the game. You can see this as a review before you buy and play the game. Hi everyone, I'm Z, a big thank you to all our subscribers. If you are not subscribed yet, please consider it as we are so close to that 500 mark. Now, starting with this game can be a bit daunting, but I will say this up front. Don't judge it solely by its appearance, there is a significant issue I will address later. But diving in, it's crucial to understand that this is a first person open world RPG tailored to a specific audience. What sets it apart is its heavy emphasis on simulation and historical accuracy. The developers even consulted a historian to ensure authenticity which earns praise in my book. It's a medieval setting complete with lords, nobles, peasants and fiefdoms. There are no dragons or wizards in sight and honestly, it's quite refreshing. There's some dense material to explore if you are inclined but what really stands out is the attention to detail. The arrangement of cities and interiors are meticulously crafted, making it feel distinct from your typical fantasy RPG. Set in the real region of modern-day Czech Republic in the Kingdom of Bohemia with influences from Germanic, Slavic and Holy Roman Empire cultures, it creates a unique and captivating atmosphere rarely seen in games of this genre. You will also get to learn a thing or two about history as being historically authentic was one of the key points of the game. The game takes a while to get started and truly engaging. You begin as Henry, the humble son of a blacksmith. When civil war erupts, tragedy strikes as your family is killed in battle, setting you on a path of revenge and adventure. While some players may be disappointed by the lack of character creation, it's essential to understand that this is a story-focused game above all else. Don't expect Skyrim. At the outset, you are just ordinary, unremarkable Henry. He is not particularly charismatic, looks average, and lacks skills in everything from persuasion to sword fighting. You are also severely limited in terms of what you can do and where you can go initially making the game feel quite linear. This might lead you to dislike the game at first, especially since it takes several hours before you are introduced to real combat and get a feel for game's flow. The initial encounters can be frustrating as they emphasize your character's lack of fighting prowess. It starts slow and remains that way in parts due to its heavy reliance on dialogue. Dialogue and cinematics are a very important aspect of the game. Once the game finally releases its grip and allows you to explore freely, you can truly delve into what it has to offer, assuming you have stuck around for that long. Again, this is a game that needs your time and once you have invested enough time, you will be glad you did. But if you are like me and you love these types of games, you might find yourself hooked right from the beginning. It's a very specific type of game for a certain type of player. While one player might see this game as boring and needlessly simulation clunky, another player who loves and appreciates certain things and enjoys certain games may see it differently. They may view it as a deep, system-heavy game with challenging, simulation-style combat, clever new ways of using stats and speechcraft, and an approach that does not hold your hand at all. I tend to lean towards that line of thinking very much, even though I understand why someone would not like this game. Thanks to, like I said earlier, the uniqueness of the world but also how some elements are handled. For example, speechcraft and persuasion stats are cool because they are affected by how you look too. If you are covered in blood and you take lots of beatings and your clothes are all messed up and you are dirty, people will react differently and often not in your favor. The cleaner you are, the better your outcome because you appeal more professional to nobles. In addition, you can also learn how to read while keeping up with eating and sleeping, kind of like a survival game. Many quests offer different free-form ways to solve them, very sandbox style. You can sneak in and poison somebody's lunch and you can just run in guns blazing with a sword or you could sneak around, you know, whatever you want. Even certain aspects of quests will change depending on how long you mess around. Some side quests will fail because somebody got tired of waiting around for you. And this is not new, but I love a game where you can talk or manipulate your way out of a conflict. This is Kingdom Come Deliverance in a nutshell. It has a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot to keep you busy and it feels like every mechanic of the game is really working against you, but it still manages to keep you engaged. The story is the oxygen. It keeps the game alive. In a time where story takes the backseat in many games, 
Kingdom Come Deliverance came out with an approach that all old school RPG fans love. There are also side quests, but the map is not filled with stuff to do as your average AAA open world RPG game. That's not always a bad thing, but I just want to make sure people keep their expectations in check. You even run into invisible walls and barriers here and there, which was really disappointing. However, I will say a lot of the environment design looks awesome and feels really lived in, and I had a really good time just kind of walking around and taking screenshots. The game looks good for the time it was released, but it is poorly optimized. However, aside from some really whack bugs and glitches that I will get into in a bit, the game still looks good to me, honestly. You can look at the bohemian countryside and the forest for hours, roam around the rustic paths, watch the streams, it's a beautiful game. NPCs in the game go about their day working, sleeping and drinking at the bar a lot. You also may learn a lot about the time period as well. I really like it. It's very interesting to see how religion and politics are handled. As you are following Henry on his progression, combat takes a long time to be enjoyable, but I have learned to really like it. Now it's all about the angle of your sword, deflecting attacks and changing up your strikes mid-fight and mid-swing. But I guess that's realism. I don't know, some people may be annoyed by the realism, especially with the conversion lockpicking mechanic that even the developers acknowledged. And good luck with the bow and arrow if you are planning on using that. But combat at least feels nice once you finally get into a flow with it. Thankfully, whatever you are doing in the game, your character actually levels up and becomes more skillful at it the more you do it. The game just does not always do the best job at showing you that, but I still found it enjoyable. And finally, it leads me to the biggest problem of the game, the thing I alluded to at the start. And this is something a lot of games have, what we call Eurojank. For games like this, it's actually a big problem. You will not enjoy the general glitchiness and bugginess of the game. It definitely could have used more time in the oven. But I understand, it was a small team making a big game at the time. But it's still really rough and often leaves a very bad first impression. You have to be patient with this game. You have arrows going straight through animals while you are hunting thanks to just poor collision detection. Getting stuck on stairs, rocks and areas like that are pretty common. Characters getting stuck on one another or glitching through walls or the camera just going in the opposite direction is pretty common. There are even some crashes here and there, some hard crashes that make an otherwise pretty game look very awful. Couple the bugginess with the fact that the game has a limited save system, it can cause problems. That's the brief overview of the game and what you can expect. I only talked about the main game here. But if this video makes you buy the game and you wanna explore the DLCs, please let me know. I will make a video on it. Overall, you should really play this game if you are a fan of RPGs or open world games. If you enjoy hardcore simulation, if you enjoy history and authentic historical depictions in games and movies, or games that are down to art and just realistic adaptation of life, you should play this game. If you are a fan of beautiful art and music, if you love European culture, you should get this one. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a once in a lifetime experience. Please get this game and play. And while you wait for the sequel, the first one will keep you occupied and also get you up to date on the lore. Thank you for watching this video, I will see you soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more quality content. Thank you, bye bye.